i5k. Let me use my software drug like to look at it. There's uh, no software like this on the web that I'm aware of that's available for free, so pretty cool product, uh, PNH. Um, so anyway, this is an antibody, and you can see just how much larger it is, right? So much larger than, than a small molecule. In fact, I can actually use my software to analyze it and try to find a drug that could, or a molecule, I should say, that could go inside of this um, system and inhibit it. So I've actually, we recently improved the software so that it, it <laughs> now it's embarrassing me, that it works right away. But I think there could be a, a error with this exact thing. So let me show you a different, maybe a different one. Sometimes you have to prepare the protein a little more extensively. So I just got blue screened in my own demo. This should hopefully work. Here's a small molecule within this protein. And you can see these small molecules start to work. And they calculate the score. These are really low scores. But the protein in the green ribbon is very large. The one little drug, the small molecule, is very small. So that's kind of the difference between a small and a large molecule. Typically, you make a large molecule through biological reactions, um, and you would make a small molecule through chemical reactions. All right. So anyway, this is uh, one piece of software that we have. Uh, the other one's Godel, or Financial Terminal. I love making software. Um, and you can see this, this is running on, on AWS, so it's slowly calculating thousands of different combinations of drugs. Um, you can even calculate a mil million combinations. I did a million molecule screen uh, a little while back, um, which was really cool. So this is getting stronger and stronger fine finds or hits or scores. There's one in three dimensions, and you can see the green molecules. The green colored atoms are part of the protein, whereas the kind of gray ones are part of the, the theoretical potential molecule that could stop this protein. You see it kind of fits like a lock and a key. Does that make sense? And it'll start kicking in into a second cloud processor that'll go quite a bit faster. So. Doesn't use uh, too much uh, um, AI just yet. We have a fragment-based discovery module that we're going to roll out that does use AI. Um, AlphaFold determines the shape of the green protein, but AlphaFold does not calculate what we calculate, which is you know will will this molecule be a good fit for this protein? So two different parts of the problem. The 3D protein folding problem is AlphaFold's problem. This is called the ligand docking problem, which is a search space function optimizational, functional optimization problem. Let's see here. So we've screened 100 molecules, and now I think this is when the cloud processor kicks in, but I'm not sure. We've recently made some some updates. Anyway, this is free for up to 10,000 compounds, so you can use it at your heart's desire, and then it's quite cheap, I think, for more molecules. It's about a, a dollar for a thousand molecules, so you could do a million compounds pretty easily with a couple of clicks. Right now, the competition can't do this, as far as I, as far as I know. Anyway. That's really that. Hydrogen bonding, yeah, that's it. So anyway, that's how that works. Uh, that's the difference between biotech and pharma. And it's increasingly become 
irrelevant difference. Uh, pharma, for a long time, was the domain of the industry, right? Whereas biotech was something a couple of companies did. Now all the big pharma companies, they do quite a lot of biotech. So it's not unusual for Pfizer or Merck to actually be more of a biopharma bio company or a biotech company than a pharma company. And you'll see small companies do bio, you know, do pharmaceutical research. So sometimes people just said biotech just means a small company, but that's not really the case. So it's kind of a si silly distinction. So biopharma is kind of what I like to call all these companies. You're a biopharmaceutical company, not a biotech company or a pharmaceutical company. It's sort of all the same now. All right. So anyway. I want to play some League of Legends. Would that be okay with you guys? Would that be all right? Would you accept that? No. Back to Excel. Damn it. I just got owned by my own fans. All right, so they keep talking about dose optimization here, so it seems like they're, they're having, they're struggling. Uh, and that's never good with a cancer drug because you usually do have to combine it. Oh, there's osteosarcoma. Uh, one of our friends had a family member die of that this disease, so I'm really happy to see somebody doing a trial on osteosarcoma, which is one of the rarest cancers that very, very few companies really give a crap about. Yeah, exactly. Amputation is the general way to handle osteosarcoma. All right, let's see. They're even going to present some of the data, which makes me wonder if... Right, so I don't know why the company is worth a billion dollars. I'd like to see if they've had any efficacy. Lose $50 million last quarter. And I thought they had different drugs the last time I looked at them, so I wonder what the heck is going on with their pipeline and portfolio. New York City and San Diego-based company. I think I knew the person who started this, but I don't remember. It's been a while. It's been a while. 